So we're going to continue with our intercessions, and Don, I believe you're leading us. Thank you. Um, do you have the COVID prayer? I've left it at home. First of all, then let us turn our minds and our spirits to the worldwide pandemic, the various forms that it's taking. Give thanks to God that the African nations seem to be handling it so well. But there are other parts of the world that are not, and even top world leaders getting caught by it. Being profoundly thankful as to how our nation has been protected. So we join with hundreds of thousands of Christians in this worldwide prayer. Heavenly Father, your scriptures make it clear that unity creates tremendous blessing and releases extraordinary power. We see your matchless power released when even two Christians agree on anything and seen in Matthew 18, 19. When your people unite in prayer and they become agents of transformation in the culture. Lord, Lord we thank you for creating the United 714, this worldwide coalition of unified prayer. We refuse to waste this divine opportunity. We come before you with one voice, asking that you heal our wounded lands. Restore our broken economies and pour out your spirit on the peoples of the world. Heavenly Father, in an hour when social tensions are on the rise and the unity of nations around the world has been fractured through ethnic, class and political divisions, the unity of your church is vital. In the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, unify the homes relationships and churches of your people around the world. Give us, we pray, the strength to contend for the unity you desire. Lord, there is great power in unity. It's impossible to estimate the effect when your church comes before you with one voice in unified prayer. Heavenly Father, today we come before you as part of a prayer coalition spanning the globe made up of millions of believers around the world who are praying with one voice through every time zone. In the name of Jesus, preserve our unity, heal our lands from the ravages of COVID-19 and freshly pour out your spirit on our fractured planet. Let's just pause to follow through in our own spirits that last request. And the Holy Spirit be poured out increasingly around this world and in our own nation and in this place and in ourselves. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, we pray. Let us pray for elections, for the two major elections, one in this country and one in the United States shortly after. Heavenly Father, it is said that nations get the leaders they deserve. So we pray that we may be deserving in this country of good, visionary, competent and just leaders. We pray that through the legitimate toing and froing of this election, we, your voters, may discern where the true leaders for the next three years are. We pray that you will raise up those who are fit to lead us and set aside those who aren't or shouldn't be there at all or will serve you in the opposition. Likewise, Heavenly Father, for the United States, with grave concern, we behold the 
the, the travails in that great nation. We pray for the health of President Trump and those around him and for better wisdom in the management of the pandemic. We pray especially for those medical advisors in that country carrying such enormous responsibility. And we pray that in their electoral process you will grant that nation, the government and the president that they need at this time. We pray this in the name of Jesus Christ, King of Kings and Lord of Lords, who appoints all leaders. Come Holy Spirit, fulfill that prayer we pray. Amen. So let's reflect on, on our life together. Giving thanks for the life we share as a congregation and the pleasure of getting back together. I'd like to pray for the regathering of our people. There are clearly many still not with us. If we're unable to come down to level one within the week, then let us pray that more will gather back and build the people of God in this place and bless our mission when he listens. I pray for an increase of mutual care amongst us as our lives have been separated slightly from each other that we may rediscover each other, perceive where there may be a need that we can share in. And then I'd like to pray for a growing vision in the leadership of this place, for the work people like Roy are starting, uh, starting to deploy, uh, for new mission vision, everything that Allison facilitates as our administrator, and even for our memorial wall, which is itself a service to others. Come Holy Spirit, strengthen us and make us more like Jesus, for his name's sake. Amen. And so let's just reflect on the sermon subject. We are called to be good stewards of the kingdom of God, not to hold the fruit of the kingdom to ourselves, but to willingly surrender it both to God the owner and to the world around us. We pray that our lives may be the more united with Jesus. And as we open ourselves to his spirit, his personality, Christ-likeness may grow amongst us. Holy Spirit, we welcome you Spirit of Jesus, that you will continue to shape us as you already have done for many years. Continue to shape us into the likeness of Jesus. For God's sake. Amen. Amen. A doxology. Lord God our Father, how great are the riches of your wisdom and your knowledge. How unsearchable your judgment and your paths beyond discovering. From you and through you and to you are all things. To you be glory forever. Amen. Do I do the collect or you? You do my wings. <laughs> Merciful God, in Christ you make all things new. Transform the poverty of our nature by the riches of your grace. And in the renewal of our lives, Make known your heavenly glory through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer. Amen. Amen. Would you stand for the peace? The peace of Christ be always with you. And also with you. You now like to greet each other from separated seating. As I said last week, we're expecting Bishop Ross to visit us next Sunday. This is a general pastoral visit he arranged much, much earlier in the year. Uh, happily, <laughs> we're at level two, uh, so it's possible. Hopefully, we might be at level one, which would be even better. 
So we expect him next Sunday, he's coming to the 10 o'clock service only. Afterwards, he's agreed to dedicate the memorial wall, which should be put up this week. It should be on Friday, but then they found that it took them longer to insert 176 cores than they estimated, so it was delayed. So they're hoping it's going to be up on Monday or Tuesday installed, so he will dedicate it on Sunday, assuming it's there. Also, if we're at level one, I'll run that slide. Thank you. Uh, Wendy has plans to organise another children's mission lunch for that Sunday. So that, if you remember, we've had one of those before where the children and adults together prepared a lunch, which was a barbecue and salads, and uh, there was a koha which went to a mission of the children's choice. So we'll learn tomorrow whether we're going down to level one or not. I think it's quite likely we will. Um, if we do, that will be the case. So there is a sign-up sheet for additional helpers for Wendy, which is on the table just inside the door as you're going out the front door, just inside the front door. Uh, and we would appreciate some assistance there. Any parents bear it in mind that their children may be involved. Is there anything you want to add to that, Wendy, in terms of briefing for next week for parents, or is it already sorted out? Okay, fine. Next slide. Uh, notice of a special general meeting. Vestry has uh, been doing some work on the future of the op shop and concluded the best way forward is to join the two shops together to put the hole through the wall, which was uh, foreseen um, two years ago, I think it is now. That was, there was a motion last year in a, in a general meeting that that should not proceed without approval of a general meeting. So Vestry is coming back and saying, well, we would like to do that. So we're giving 10 days notice, which is the requirement. So the meeting would be on Wednesday the 14th at 7 p.m. That's 10 days time. There is a briefing paper to explain what's going on also on the table just inside the front door, uh, which will explain to you why we think that's a good idea. Uh, the reason to make the meeting on a Wednesday, not a Sunday, is twofold. One, it's Labor Weekend the following Sunday, and we'll lose more people there anyway. And secondly, if we are going ahead, there are various time constraints on us, and every day counts because we, if we go ahead, we have to get some more legal work done and go back to the council to complete the building consent, which they wouldn't give us without some more legal work, and then we have to get a builder, and it has to be done by Christmas to qualify for uh, substantial help the landlord will give us, but only if we do it by Christmas. So we've got to get cracking if we're going to do that. So you can read all about it there, and Alison and other Christian members are available to discuss it with you if you want to get some clarity. We come now to our final song, another video, uh, Made Me Glad. It's a song which uh, Miriam Webster at Hillsong wrote. It's one again that we have sung sometimes, but you'll get to see the original here. And it's uh, something of the Lord's faithfulness, his protection for us, his keeping of us, and we can relax and enjoy and rest into that care that he has for his people. 